How old should a child be before you put him or her in front of a computer? Some experts are now saying that a one-month-old infant can start to interact with a computer. Here at this nursery school, three- and four-year-old children are working very well with computers. Indeed, sometimes it seems that children work better with computers than adults do. Today, we take a look at computers and kids on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe, and with me this week is George Morrow. George, I've got some computer newsletters here. These are not written by Esther Dyson or Jan Lewis. These are written by a teenager in New York, and as it says on the masthead, this thing is called Kids Computer News by Kids for Kids. George, we're talking about children and computers today, and we've all seen the fascination that kids have with computers. Why is that, do you think? Well, I think for adults, adults are convinced that computers are complicated, and they're really not. Children don't know any better. <laughs> and just kind of fall into it. It's interesting, when you're young, it's a lot easier to learn. Also, computers, people that deal with them usually end up making some mistakes. Adults hate to make mistakes. <laughs> Kids are always making mistakes, and making a mistake with a computer isn't any different than having your mother tell you that you've <laughs> left your shoes on the floor. So the environment, it's much more conducive for kids to learn about than adults. George, we're going to find out today. We're going to meet several very talented young children, young people who deal with computers and do some incredible things with computers. And we're going to start out by meeting Harold Sexton, a 15-year-old from Palo Alto, California. Duke Sexton is 16 years old. He's been using computers since junior high school, not just for games and homework, but for programming and hacking as well. He began with an Apple II, which he used to run his own bulletin board. But he quickly graduated to a Macintosh Plus, which he plans to use to publish his own magazine on computer security. Hacking and freaking and everything in that area has been escalating um, for a while now, in the past five years, and corporations need help in that extent, and there aren't very many publications out that help in computer security. And so that's one of the main reasons I am putting out the magazine. Duke spends a lot of time in front of the keyboard. He attends a special high school that allows him to concentrate all his classes in the morning, leaving his afternoons free to work on his magazine. Duke's extracurricular life didn't always revolve around computers. He's a capable athlete and plays in a local rock band. But he admits that at least part of what makes computers appealing to his generation is the thrill of hacking. For the first people, I think that is what makes them very exciting and the fact that you can, I mean, if like the computer underground got together, I mean, it could bring, I mean, a powerful situation or a corporation or something like that to its knees and render it um, helpless. But I think that is um, part of the excitement. Duke hopes to make his career in new computer applications, especially in the fields of biotechnology and robotics for artificial limbs. While Duke has his school to thank for his early interest in computers, he thinks that a lot of other students are scared off by the way the technology is presented. They always um, say, you know, well, the computer is infallible, but it's the programmer that, you know, causes all the trouble. And I mean, that um, frightens, I think, some students away from it, because when they do make an error, they're going, oh my gosh, you know, how could this happen to me? With us in the studio now are Laura Risk, who's 12 years old and from San Francisco. Next to Laura is Ben Wu, who's 13 and from San Jose. And next to Ben is Aaron Arakawa, 11 years old from Los Altos Hills, California. George? Laura, what is it that you find interesting about computers? Tell us. The way that they can do stuff 
real fast mm -hmm. without hardly any input. Mm -hmm. And the way that there's there's so much there's I mean they're real small mm -hmm. in comparison with lots of what power in a do. small space, huh? Mm -hmm. Ben? Well, um, I like the different things that a computer can do. It can help you with like reports or mm -hmm. you want to print out some graphics or anything for school. And also computers is always advancing and it's developing, so yeah. there's always something new you can try. So you're saying it's practical, not only fun to play with, yeah, it helps you uh, in school. Aaron, why do you like computers? Well, I like computers because they give me, um, they help me with my homework and I can also do be creative on it. Mm, and like in the programming. Mm -hmm, and it's, there's an, an unlimited amount of things that you can do on it. Well, you guys have each written programs, which you're going to show us now, Lauren. I want to start with you. And you have a game up here, which you wrote. <coughs> Tell us about the game and, and, and play it for us, Laura. Well, there's this turtle right there. Mm -hmm. OK. And you're trying to get to the finish, which is the ocean. And you're avoiding the eagles and the dogs. And okay. there's no dogs until the next level. OK, well, show us how you would play it now. And you can move forward by pressing the mm -hmm. F key and left mm -hmm. and forward. And how did you program the eagles? What did you tell them to do? I said, for every time I go forward, you go forward or back or something like that. Mm. To move and, in concert with the turtle. Yeah, and. Okay, show us how, would the turtle get caught? Can you show us how a turtle would get caught by an eagle in that game? Okay. So you can see every time you do a turtle move, your eagles each respond in a unique way, huh? Mm-hmm. And you, you wrote this using Logo, right? Logo or, Writer. Uh -huh. It's a combination of Logo and word processing. Uh-huh. How long did it take you to write this program? Let's see. Uh, Lucky the eagle just, just missed, missed you. you. Okay. <laughs> did you do that? I want you to talk while you're doing that, if you okay. can, Laura. Did you write this just for fun, or was it a challenge well, to figure this out? Or was it a school project? Um, I wrote it because I wanted to see if I could. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a How good long did reason. you spend on it, Laura? About. So you know, I just got caught. Yeah. About okay. a week and a half or something. Did it's you, not done yet. I want to work on this. It one. had some bugs then, huh? Yeah, a lot. Ben, I want to ask you to take over the Apple if you can and, and get your program loaded up in a second. Okay. So could you sort of? Laura, know? is it fun finding those bugs? Yeah. yeah. Move over the. Oh. If you can take your disc out, Laura, and I want Ben <laughs> to get his things up. What was your question, George? I've, I've always found it fun finding bugs in programs, and I just wonder whether Laura found it fun also. Sometimes it's fun, but if it keeps coming up over and over, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it gets beginning frustrating, yeah. When you say you're going to improve the program, how are you going to improve it? You see, you're still working well, on it. Well, I was thinking if an eagle or a dog gets you, then there's this big picture of the turtle and the eagle reaching out and picking it up, or the oh, dog. Oh, you're going to change the screen then to make it more yeah. graphic when he gets caught. And yeah. also have a. Um, have it when the turtle gets to the end, the picture of the turtle lying in the sun on the yeah. ocean beach. <laughs> ben, tell us what your program is here. What are you showing? All right, oh, well, right here it just, it just showed some um, randomly generated lines and dots, you know, just simple techniques in basic. So and this program is written in basic? Yes, it's written in basic. And um, this display right here is um, not randomly generated, and it was, it, takes a lot longer time because it's you have to create it step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, now this part of the program I created you can draw by using this joystick and what it says is you hold down button one to draw and button two to change color. So um, what you do is you hold down this button one here and you can draw lines or circles or anything you like and you can hit button two to change color mm -hmm. to the color you like, you can draw again. So it's a paint program. Uh -huh. You're yeah. a paint program, written only, in basic. Yeah, Great. and the only drawback to it is that the joystick is really sensitive, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be able to draw very clearly. Maybe if you have a Koala pad, it mm -hmm. might be able to work mm -hmm. better. What's the next part of your program, Ben? All right, um, right here, um, you, by using one of these number keys, you can play a tune. So you've turned the number of keys into a keyboard there. Yeah, you know? uh -huh, just okay. like a music keyboard. And um, I'll hit zero to continue. Okay. All right, and music and graphics are some things that the computer is really good at, and it can also calculate with really um, great speed. Mm -hmm. And right now it's going to have a uh, combination of graphics and sounds, mm -hmm. and um, 
what it's going to do first is going to introduce itself as the um, Apple IIe. And I used a program called SAM to talk. Uh -huh. I changed it a bit. But since it doesn't have a speech synthesizer, it's going to be not so clear. But mm -hmm. if you listen carefully, you should be able to hear it. OK, it's about to come up? Yes. OK, we'll, we'll, we'll listen for it. Uh -huh. It's loading now, right? Uh-huh. Can you read? <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Okay. okay. Now you have, a, you have a more complicated graphics program yes. coming, don't you? All right. Um, right here, it's um, just some different colored lines, and right now it's um, drawing a f um, some circles. Now, for some other computers, you would um, just type circle mm -hmm. and you can draw it. But for the two, for the Apple II, you need to give it special equations so that it can do so that. So you're calculating. You're having the machine calculate <laughs> these equations as it yeah. draws a circle. Uh huh. <laughs> And These are great circles on a sphere then, right? Uh-huh. And it's going to appear to be a three-dimensional sphere. After this is drawn, it's going to have a um, three-note harmony, mm -hmm. which, is sh which should not be able to be created, but by um, playing notes really close together, it makes a bubbly sound, but it still sounds like a harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the apple can't play three notes at no, the same time, uh, right? But, but you tried it. Yeah, I tried okay. it. Okay, we're going to hear it now? Mm-hmm. It's looking for the music. Ah, yeah. Sounds like harmony to me. Ben, I'm going to have to ask you to unload your disc. I want Aaron to get right. his program in-house, okay. if you can get that out of there. And as soon as it stops singing, Aaron, you can get your program in there. OK. While Aaron is loading, Ben, uh, tell me about that program. Did you write that again just for the challenge of it or what? Yeah, well, I wanted to see how I can create circles, because I've always wanted to do something like that. OK, Aaron, you have a very fast loading program. You're ready to go, so well, show us what you yeah, wrote. OK, well, this is a voting program. It, I designed it for my, for my school, because we have a student council, and um, I use this program for the elections. And uh, here it gives okay. you so, a little So show us how you would use it, Aaron. And I can't make a print out of it, so. Right. So I type no. C, continue. OK, now I'm going to the. The setup section, okay. And I, this is the part I, I can say I'm saving the votes onto the desk. Mm -hmm. And so I type in the name I want to save it under. So I type, oops. Okay. Okay, how many for president? All. Okay, so you're kind of loading into how many candidates there are yeah. for each office. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, now I, input the. The president's names name. of the candidates. President We're just calling P1, one, P2, mm -hmm. etc. Aaron, it's you wrote this in what language? I'm the, in basic. Okay. Yes. And you really wrote this to use it for your class elections in school, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Looks okay. like this is a voting machine. Well, that's, I think that's what we're about to see. Yeah. So it's it's starting to disk all the candidates' names, right? Yeah. As you put them in, mm -hmm. Aaron. OK, so you've got two candidates for each of four offices, huh? Right. And what happens once you get to that point? Well, OK, this is the voting part. OK, okay. so um, say I just came up here and I said, well, I want this P1 guy for president. And then OK, BP2. so as George says, you really invented a voting machine here for students to vote in their class elections on the com computer. Right. And you actually have used this in, in an election. Right. How did it work? Pretty good? Mm, yeah, except I kind of messed it up in one part <laughs> because I used the same file name twice and wrote over oh, the old file. You'll so. improve it. Guys, I'm sorry we have to move on. Now, lots of young people are involved in bulletin board systems, and we're going to meet a 13-year-old junior high school student now who runs his own board on his new Apple II GS. Wendy Woods has the report. Bill Bennett has a paper route every day after school, but that's where his similarity to most kids his age ends. The bundles of mail he gets each day tell you something about the importance and popularity of what Bill calls his hobby. Bill, at 13, runs a computer bulletin board on his Apple IIGS. It's a 24-hour system with the largest number of discussion topics in the Bay Area. He put it together himself, and it all started five years ago when he was eight. My father bought about five years ago an Apple II Plus, and I just got interested in it through school. This, our school was teaching us about how to use it, and you know, it just seemed like an interesting thing. And it's 
If it's there, why, he, why not use it? Phil started with games, but the world opened to him when he got a modem. He was fascinated by the information he could get by calling local bulletin boards. That's when he decided to start his own. The information is now coming to me. Before it was coming, you know, I would have to go chase it down and call the local bulletin board systems or whatever and find it all out. But now it's coming and then it's being saved right here on my computer. And it's a lot more convenient. Also, I enjoy running it because on another bullet support system, I, I can, um, I, I can, you know, get my feelings out. And, you know, I can ask questions and everything, but I can't exactly run it how I want and put what I want on it, and you know, choose how it looks and everything. You can see how Bill got interested in computers. His dad has one he uses for business, and his little brother Steve inherited Bill's old Apple II. In fact, the only one without a computer at home is his mother, Jean. She says living with a computer addict is a challenge. It was quite an adjustment for someone who didn't even know what a computer was until it walked in when he was eight years old. And he's a total addict. He really is. It's hard to get him out of his room for anything, whether it's dinner or, you know, anything. Since installing a second phone line for Bill's bulletin board, she says their home life is running smoother. But it's clear the family is proud of their whiz kid and can only wonder what kind of a career he's shaping for himself by this valuable computer experience. In case you'd like to call Bill's board, the number for Cat's Tail is area code 415-349-TAIL. How did he get the name for the board? Well, it's named after his favorite comic strip character, Bill the Cat. In San Mateo, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. We have several new youngsters joining us in the studio now. First of all, Aaron Epstein, who's a 13-year-old student from Walnut Creek. And next to Aaron is Clifton Dalgard, 12 years old from San Jose. And next to Clifton, Rob Clifford, Robin Lee, who's also 12 and also from San Jose. George? Tell us what it's like with you in school and in your family to be a computer expert. Well, in school, there's no fact. A lot of my friends are, like computers for the games, and we like trading games. And sometimes they ask me for help with their programs mm -hmm. in class. And at home, my dad encourages me to keep programming. And the rest of my family, it's nothing different. Mm -hmm. Clifton, what about you? I also have a positive uh, result in my school also. My friends enjoy uh, my help to them in computer programming, mm -hmm. and my dad, also a computer programmer, gives me help in what I need. Oh. Robin. Okay, um, mine is also a positive attitude because people who sort of use me as a resource, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, you gotta help this guy, this guy, you gotta call across the room, and you know, you help teachers as well. Huh. As you end up learning a lot. So bottom line is you know a lot of stuff that other people yeah, want your they'll help need on. a lot of help. Aaron, let's go to you, and you've written a program, and show us what your program is about. My program is called Teachers, and it teaches you five different functions that we had in one of our sessions in our textbooks. And Computer functions. Right? Yeah. It teaches you about computer functions. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And it, first it says if you want to take a test or lesson, mm -hmm. and the lessons are for integers, square roots, random lengths, or mid-strength. Okay. And and then at first it gives you the definition, and then it tells you about it, how to use it. OK, this is integers right now, for example? Yeah. OK. And Aaron's written in basic? Yeah, it's in basic. And the test, it gives you one question for each OK, so this is the first lesson. question on integers. What is the integer for that very long number you've written there? Yeah. Okay. And the answer? OK. And there's a question about random numbers? Mm-hmm. And how long did it take you to write the program? About uh, four or five days in class. Mm -hmm. okay. The third it's... question is, I'm sorry, George, about square no. roots. Yeah. Is it finished, or are you still working on it? Yeah, I keep, it's never really finished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can always add things to it. OK, and this question is about string commands here. Okay, what's your last one about there? It's okay. about mid-strings. Okay, so what is the output of mid-string W string comma 4 comma 2 plus E if W string is molly? And the answer is? Why? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Super. Good. Now, did you write this just for the fun of it or for the challenge of it or? Well, uh, for extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good enough reason. Yeah, and also, 
it's fun just adding things to it and creating different uh -huh. things on the computer. Aaron, I'm going to ask you to take your yeah. desk out of there and move the computer over to Clifton so we can have Clifton uh, show us his program. Now you said while you're loading Clifton, Aaron, you've only been programming for about four months, you said. Yeah. Do you find it a, a, a challenge? What's the experience when you're programming? I mean, you stay up all night like a lot of kids do? <laughs> sometimes I'm up really late. And because I sometimes I find bugs in it, and I just work on them and until and then I find new things I can do. Yeah. So I can keep yeah. picking up different things to do along the way. Clifton, you're on. What's your program? OK. My program is called Teach Type, and it teaches you how to type. It's mm -hmm. a, like a typing tutor. OK. Uh -huh. OK. And Clifton, how long have you been programming? Two years now. Ah. And right now I'm poking a number to make sure my program doesn't mess up during <laughs> its stages. It's a, it's a courageous programmer yeah. who pokes in a live demonstration here. OK. <laughs> Uh, I have my title screen, and then um, it shows you a list of uh, its lessons. and okay, different keys to practice yeah, on? to practice okay. on. And now I'm going to work on the home keys, which are the first eight keys. It tells you where to position your keys, what are the keys, and now it's telling you to type keys. And if I mess up, it'll tell you that's not right, and it'll record the number you get wrong. See, okay. You got one stroke, one stroke wrong. wrong. Now I'm going to try a drill, and my drill is random. It picks a letter in the home keys, and it tells you to type it. So the top line is generating a letter, yeah. and the second line you're typing it. Yeah. And um, uh, what's hard about this, because most uh, uh, documents you write or type, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see the mm -hmm. wording. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, it'll give you instantly, so it's a challenge. Clifton, how long have you been working on this program? About three weeks now. Mm. Okay, now what happened just then? You, you got an answer? Okay, I finished, and this thing, uh, uh, my program has a clock ready in it that records your time, and it told me I got 11 words per minute. Okay, so then that particular okay. drill, you were going 11.4 yeah. words per minute. How about if you want to know how many errors you had made? You well, uh, I'm adding that also, and the, the what errors is, is X, and okay. it'll tell me I made only one error. So uh, Clifton, you that. did your own real-time clock then? Yeah. Good. Okay, I want to, yeah, Clifton, that's the idea. Move the computer over to Robin, and if you can boot your disk up, Robin, watch while you're doing that, Clifton. Let me ask you again, did you do this just for the fun of it, or actually people you think will use this to learn how to type? Well, uh, when I was making this program, I was in a uh, typing elective, uh -huh. and I wanted to find a better way to teach how them to type. Because You use the computer to help you in your yeah. own work, then. and then, so, I was about to enter this into the typing, Class, See, so that's that's my principle, that the fellow yeah. that needs the program either the write it or write it. Right. That's right. Okay, Robin, tell us what your program is. Okay, um, what my program does it, it, is it teaches the user uh, about positive and negative numbers. Mm. And what it does, it generates a random number mm -hmm. that uh, you have to enter a positive number and a negative number, and when you add them together, they've got to equal that number itself. Okay, but this is in a game form, right? Describe the game format you laid out here. Okay, well... What I did is I split out the screen um, so you'd be able to distinguish from your scanner and all. Uh -huh. And then the actual stuff, it would... Um, so you randomly assign a number to the enemy, to the alien striker, right. which say 49 is the number right now, and uh -huh. how would you then play the game? Then, okay, right now you're pause a blaster, or that's where you enter your positive number. Mm -hmm. Let's just say 49, uh, 50. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you got a negative number that you've got to enter right, as well, right. so let's just say what? Fire away a little while, and then you got a hit. And you're right, because your new, your new enemy is a 33. Yeah, and they'll, um, with the new revised one, you'd be able to decide how many you'd have. Uh huh. But it's, it's So you're finished. still working on this program, yeah, too, working. like everybody else. How long have you been working on it? Um, so far, two weeks with, you know, intervals. Oh, I didn't work continuously. First cut. How long have you been programming? Um, a year. Well, what's the, the excitement, the pleasure you get out of programming, Robin? What, tell, tell us about the experience. Well, I guess just writing the program kind of gives me pleasure because to have that feeling that you actually did something yeah. on the computer. And you made that yeah. machine do what you wanted it you, to do, right? And um, let's just say you got something wrong. It would miss and then tell uh -huh. you the answer. Got to delay a little longer. And then it would just keep going like that until uh, it would it reached the number of aliens that you wanted to. Okay, so all three of you are still working on your programs and you're gonna make them even better, and we're out of time. Thank you very much for being here. Hope you enjoyed Computers and Kids, and we'll be back in just a minute with this week's Computer News.
Random Access file this week, mixed reviews so far on the two new Macintosh computers. The lower end new machine is the Mac SE. It's an upgrade of the Mac Plus and features one expansion slot and two drives. The expansion slot can take a new board from AST that will let you run MS-DOS software on the Mac SE. It's priced at $2,900 and up and it's available now. Most attention is being focused on the new 32-bit Mac 2 built around the Motorola 68020 microprocessor. The Mac 2 is four times as fast as a Mac Plus and it has six expansion slots. The Mac 2 can also drive a color monitor. It comes in three pieces with separate keyboard, computer and monitor. The Mac 2 can also run MS-DOS software with the new AST board in one of its expansion slots. The Mac 2 can also run Unix with an optional board. Base price for the Mac 2 is $4,800. Shipments will begin in May. One analyst described the Mac 2 as the most powerful personal computer now on the market, saying it was superior to the new Compaq Desk Pro 386. CD-ROM technology got a major shot in the arm this week with the announcement of a new CD-ROM product from Microsoft called Bookshelf. It's a CD-ROM containing a complete dictionary, a spelling checker, a thesaurus, Bartlett's quotations, the World Almanac, several style and form references, and a national zip code directory, which can automatically find the zip code for any address. All of this comes on one compact disc. The disc and an IBM-compatible CD-ROM drive will sell for $1,100. The drive is made by Hitachi, but it's being sold under the Amdeck brand name. Time for this week's software review, and here's Paul Schindler. Excuse me, I was just making comments on someone else's report. Is this what people do to your work when you pass it around for comment? Maybe it's time you tried For Comment. Now, For Comment is one of the first packages in a new software category, group writing software. I don't know any large organization that doesn't pass around documents for approval. The problem with passing around paper is keeping track of who made what changes. No problem here. Use a menu to select a file. The cover sheet shows who wrote the file and who it was sent to. Anyone can comment, but only the author can make actual changes to the text. The text is in the upper window. You can produce it with any word processor. Each dot you see at the left indicates a suggested change or comment. In the bottom, reversed blocks are suggested deletions, yellow type is additions, and white text shows the original. Each comment contains the person's initials and date. With one key, you can swap in a revision if you accept it. For comment, group writing software for $200 from Broderbund in San Rafael, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Fujitsu has announced a breakthrough in language translation software. It's unveiled a package called Atlas One, which can translate English into Japanese virtually instantaneously. The computer screen displays two columns. You enter text in English in one column, and the computer displays the Japanese translation on the other side. Fujitsu also announced Atlas Two, which translates from Japanese into English. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide.